Welcome traders and everybody who decided to tune in to this very first episode of Trading Psychology. I go about as Medici FX and today on the show is our first guest Julian. He's a rather interesting trader because of his interest in psychological aspects of the market. Julian, why exactly in psychology fascinates you about the markets and how do you relate to it? Okay, so uh, when I first started off trading, I didn't know anything about psychology and therefore I could not be interested in it. Yeah. I was more interested in the economical aspects of the trading, or at least I thought I was. Mm -hmm. But in over the course of two years in trading, into trading, I realized that I didn't like the economical aspects at all. And the reason why I actually liked the uh, psychological aspects is because it, uh, it's not only uh, tied to trading. So when your psychology is right in trading, it actually needs to be right in all parts of your life in order to succeed in uh, the forex market. Right. So you, think, you say that uh, psycholog psychology stems through all the branches in your life to have a good effect on your trading. Yeah. So you need to be structured in your life uh, in all parts of your life. For example, if you're in the morning, you wake up and you don't make your bed up or any type of uh, activity, activity that. That, that you're not structured in or don't do because you don't want to do, uh, this will relate into your success in Forex. Right. So essentially that um, from the moment you wake up, so essentially the moment you go to sleep, you have to be kind of structured and psychologically in tune. Yeah, not only with your, your mind, but also your body. For example, you need to exercise to be in shape. Right. I uh, think uh, that's such an underestimated uh, actual um, tool, the gym and exercising the body. It's really important to have your brain in check and have your body in check. Yeah, yeah, it is because uh, there are studies done that show that if you are not exercising, right. you're not getting a certain amount of uh, releasing of chemicals in your head, right. which leads to depression and on, on other unwanted, uh, what's called diseases. Right. Yeah. We, we as humans, we need exercise to even be happy. Yeah, right. And uh, this also relates to, for example, studying that if you're studying for school or anything, you need a break do some physical exercise and it's actually uh, stated that your retention of information is more when you exercise than if you don't. Yeah. So this relates to uh, trading in a sense that all of this actually leads to discipline, which is really Correct. necessary in uh, achieving success in the market. So actually uh, another uh, interesting topic that fascinates me is that uh, looking at, for example, S&P 500, you you can look at the graph and you can kind of see uh, in what kind of emotion the general public is. For example, when you look at uh, the S and P five hundred, you can see when there is a big decline in the price. You can see that the general public is in not confident at all in the market. Yeah, so that's what happened now with the COVID nineteen. Yes, uh, that's actually really interesting. Uh, topic because the price is still pretty high for what's actually happening in the market. This shows that people are overconfident actually to what actually is happening in real life and you can probably see in the next couple of months that this reality will catch up in the market. Yeah, that it's uh, manipulated from uh, many sides of like governments and uh, central banks etc. Yeah, so definitely. Uh, that's what, yeah, that's what exactly what's happening now. It's people are not that confident, but the price is kept high. So people will be looking at the price and think the economy is doing all right. It's doing fine. Well, actually it's falling apart piece by piece and people are investing right now or yeah. Yeah. And that, let's say it's kind of all time highs yeah. because S&P 500. Because everyone's investing. Everyone's feeling confident, but in reality, uh, yeah, the market is like, for example, USA, where we're talking about S and P five hundred. It's it's falling apart. Yeah, and we are uh, going to head into a uh, another dive. Yes. Sooner or later. And that's what they do. They try to get as many people on board, and then they just drop the price, and everyone loses money except for the big players. Right. Yeah. So I would do say it's artificially driven in a sense now yes. because 
what is happening in real life does not reflect at all in the price of the market. No, yeah, it doesn't. Right, and also which is really interesting. Yeah, and in your forex charts, right? How do you see the emotions of? Well, you can see uh, in what country it's going well. Right. <laughs> if the Australian dollar is going up against all pairs, you can see that the confidence there is good. Right, and you play on that. You on yeah, yeah. This yeah. is what fascinates you in a sense. This is really fascinating to me. Okay. And that's how I uh, put my positions as well. Right. So Julian, then a statement: being a trader is seventy percent psychology and thirty percent working on your strategy. Uh, could you argument this for us? Ooh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I would even say it's higher than 70%. Okay. Uh, the reason I say this is because uh, strategies, strategies, they work. They, they're they backtested, they're doing their thing. But you can use a strategy and still not be profitable if your psychology in the market is wrong. Correct. Uh, the reason this happens is because you're putting in your own money that you probably worked for or achieved in some way. Yeah. And you put a, a value to this and you start to think in emotional ways and not structured ways, which are given to you by the strategies. Strategies are just structured ways of making money. But when you put in uh, your emotions, you don't follow these strategies properly. Exactly. So there's enough strategies that work, but people that stick to one and actually master that that is psychology psychological aspect that that needs to be uh, done. Yeah, I agree that the strategy is the mechanical part. That's that's a given if you uh, if you just stick to it. Although, yeah. the the tie, you tie your money to an emotion, you know that yeah. you you worked for it and that it means a lot. So when you put it out in the market and you're risking it and you see how it can go away, how you can lose it. People start doubting the strategy that's given that is work that works. Yeah, exactly. It and works in the long run. Right. That's proven already. Why would you change it? It's the the psychologic psychology behind it that makes you change the strategy and make it fail. Exactly. The when people start doubting themselves is when they start doubting the market and the strategy. Yeah, and they start to when they see a little bit of profit, they start to take it in instead of letting them run and Exactly. You'll lose eventually because your, your risk reward is negative. Yeah, actually a big part is that when someone uh, just starts out with Forex, I would say, uh, or not even start out but doing it for some time, that they would have a TP and an SL set. They would often, a failing trader, 90% of the traders would actually have their SL hit, but if they see some greens, they're going to pull it out before their TP and then an hour later their TP would hit yep. and they would be like, oh, shit, you I know. I could have made that. Yeah, and then they start outing. But as well, what happens is, when it gets close to their cell, they start moving their cell lower. Yeah, that's what happens a lot as well. So when it's a profit, they take early. Yeah, and when it's in a cell, they let it run. Yeah, or yeah. Uh, some other cases when it's going into your TP and they do start moving the TP, take profit further up, thinking that price is gonna shoot higher and higher. That's also this nice. irrational behavior towards the market. Uh, is definitely something that causes a lot of, well, 90% of the traders to actually fail. Yeah. Do you think that psychology be trained? Uh, most definitely this can be done. Uh, for example, me in the beginning, I didn't know anything about psychology. So I just jumped on the market and, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I lose my first account. Right. Because I don't know how to properly, um, what's it called? React, maybe? React or... I don't know how to structure my emotions in a way that will lead me to making money, you know, right. in the forex market. But when you start reading books, you start to, for example, out, even outside of trading, just think uh, about how are you feeling at the moment. So first of all, uh, it is important to first comprehend your emotions, not only while you're trading, but also throughout the day and reflect on these emotions and why they're there. And from that point, you can start to uh, amend your emotions in the, the way they needed to be done and not be in clogged into yourself. Right. So kind of like structure them, because I feel that many people, in some sense, they have all these emotions in there or they're angry first and then they're sad and then they're depressed and they're like happy again. And we're all over the place. We're not coherent. No. And being coherent, I do believe, is a really, really important part and also being disciplined. 
So actually that ties in with one of my biggest downfalls in not only trading but uh, life as well. Uh, so in the course of my life I have always been very emotional but I've always been hiding it. It's like my defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, like it's to a point where I actually don't feel anything but underlying emotions are really deep. Right. But I just don't feel them the way I should feel them. Okay. And this... Uh, this was translated into my trading really deep and actually because of trading i realized this okay so this helped me to kind of fix it i'm not there yet but i'm working on it and in what way uh, did trading actually reveal that to you could you say so trading they always say you should not have emotions in trading right but i don't think i can agree with this because I think you need the right emotions when you're trading, not no emotion at all. I mean, we cannot have no emotions. We're, I mean, we're human beings and we're not robots. No, but if you, if you would go to any course saying you should not let your emotions decide. Right. They're right because normally you're deciding with the wrong emotions. Yeah, you're irrational because you, yeah. you're making uh, the decision based on your emotion at that moment. Yeah, but... But... You're, that's because you're doing it the wrong emotion right like if you if you if you don't feel anything you're not gonna receive any success either okay this is because basic laws of the universe okay but for for, for example i can argue that i don't believe that trading is something which you can manifest into existence i don't believe you, you trade and you have your mechanical method and you have to be on point with your emotions. But I don't believe that if you meditate in the morning and you say to yourself, I'm going to make this and I'm going to make this and I'm the, the, the market will follow your decisions. No, it's your, your thoughts are going to be directed into the direction of you making the correct choices. But it's not like the market's going to give you what you meditated upon. No. Uh, yeah, I do agree with that, that you can meditate to a, a mental market in your way. But... Uh, I think I see a difference when you meditate or do any kind of things uh, of, of spiritual uh, awakening right. in a sense. Uh, you are not making the market work for you. You're, you're in sync with the market right? on the correct way. You are amending yourself to the rest. Yeah, correct. So it's not like you, you make the market go your way. It's, yeah, it's you adapting to yeah, the it, flow of the market. So saying, yeah, you, you'd meditate and you would do that to maybe use your strategy in a more mechanical and rational way. That's yeah. what I would say, because yeah. you can still meditate and you can still do all the things, but you can still have a loss because that's part of your, it, you know, that's normal. Yes, of course. But that's just a way to test how you control your emotions and you can control your emotions by practicing. True. So, I, yeah, if you practice. You can control your losses. They won't affect you in a negative way. And it's not because you're not feeling anything. It's just because you know that in the long run, you will make money. Exactly. Because your strategy works. Exactly. I think a key thing to understand and to grasp from here is that even if you do take losses, which everybody does, it's, it's part of it. It's part of this game. That like in anything, taking a loss is the part of the business. And the biggest thing in many traders is, is they internalize those losses as if it's... Um, like them being wrong then be exactly and it's not 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 a bad thing to be wrong it's a it's a bad thing to uh always want to be right right so if you're not right uh you should not think i was not right you should just be i should adapt to the market exactly and accordingly exactly and implement your strategy continuously because yeah. i think the view of uh, being right or wrong, I don't agree with that to you. Simply because, you know, I look at people sometimes and they're like, yeah, I was wrong. And, you know, and then they look and then others would be like, yeah, he was wrong. He didn't make the correct call. Where in reality, right, he just used a strategy. And let's say if you continue doing that, there is this pressure that if you don't want to be the wrong one in the crowd. And I think we need to eliminate that mentality of being right and wrong. No, you're using your strategy in a mechanical matter. And if, and if it doesn't go by plan, which means there's like a slippage and you do lose, it means that that is that percentage of the, another percentage of your strategy, which isn't profitable. Let's say your strike rate or 85% or 80%, you know, the other 20 is still there. 
So that's yeah, where you can never be a hundred percent right. Yeah, exactly. You will, you will not. So you need to accept this this uh, statement. Exactly. So that that from there, I'm. Uh, I say that if you do make a mistake and uh, you don't like you make a loss, you shouldn't be pointing finger at yourself, and neither no one should be that you're wrong. No, you just use your strategy, and it slipped. You know. Yeah. And that's also a big pressure that many traders don't want to have. That yeah, I don't want to be the wrong one here, where yeah, and that that makes them nervous. Yeah. Question for somebody who's starting out: What do you think if they they're getting a strategy and they're working on it? Uh, do you think they should backtest their strategy, or do you think they should dive into the market with a live account on the spot with like an idea of their strategy, but never backtested it? What's your take on that? So I would say you first learn basics from wherever baby pips and right. then you you just start I would I would not say backtest only because this backtesting is nowhere near the real market scenario. Right. You you don't like for example if you're on a 4 hour you're just clicking away candles. Yes. You don't realize that each of these candles are 4 hours long. You're clicking them away in seconds. Yeah, like I, your emotion is not tied. Absolutely, to time. absolutely. And I can say that I had that issue of backtesting, backtesting, backtesting. And when I'll jump on a real chart, I wouldn't click a candle, and I'll be sitting there yeah, for four you're hours. Waiting. You need to be patient. Yeah, but you're not as a human. Exactly. You need to train that. Right. And that's a big part of uh, realization. You need to have. You need to wait for your setups to develop. Right. You don't make them in your head right. work like you, you just say this is gonna go down now because i think it will go down right exactly you to just wait to wait for your strategy to develop a setup that you can enter yes and then only enter exactly so then your take for someone who's starting out would you reckon they would just go in with a live account let's say half a thousand or like small amount or big amount it doesn't matter it depends what they're willing to risk I would first of all start off with just looking at the market and just paper trading the right. real life market. Right. Just by starting off with uh, uh, entering any position they think it will happen. Right. And then from the things, if they start losing all of those positions, they can say like, why am I losing these positions? Right. And then they can slowly start building their confidence into the market. Mm. But if for your beginning, beginning, I think you should follow some, some sort of course. Right, okay. To get the basics down. And then you can work on your own. And what, what would you say to, for example, there's people who did the paper trading. Let's say I've done paper trading for two months. Yes. But they still don't have that push to go and trade their life because they're scared to be right with their own money. What would you say on that in a sense yeah i would just say you have to just do it right first start off with money you really don't care about mm -hmm. just even if it's just 100 euros okay if that's a lot for you already and you start caring about that yeah you need to work on not caring about that money you just put it on there and say i've lost this money already. that is a good way yeah in fact and then you will see that if you lose the money you won't be bothered because you're already in your mind set that you have lost that amount of money exactly and in a sense then when you do that you, when you develop you could also start looking at the numbers on your account as just numbers you know not money when you're let's say you're up 50 pips and for example 50 pips is like 200 euros you don't see it as 200 anymore you just see it as pips and yeah the 200 is nice of course but it goes equal way to if you're losing you're not going to be like oh that's negative 200 no it's just okay i'm negative uh 50 pips or something but it is within my risk parameters. And that's also a big thing that you need to create these parameters, which you're like, let's say you need to set a certain amount, which you're willing to risk for your account. And yeah. then if you have those parameters, your psychology also doesn't get too nudged yeah. because you don't get triggered uh, uh, that, in the wrong ways. Exactly. Cause you're not risking 30% you know, of your account <laughs> with a trade. Ledger, leveraging because you lost a trade or something. Exactly. You'll make the money back if you just keep your strategy. If your strategy is working and you really just hammer it down and honestly rationally follow it, it should work in the long run. Yeah, it will. An interesting book actually I recommend you guys is uh, The Way of the Turtle, which actually touches upon the rationality you need to have 
let's say, using your strategy and uh, removing all the psychological factors in a sense. Yes. That's so a good book. I think we've kind of touched upon everything what uh, related to your story and related to how you would uh, tell people and what to improve. Is there anything else you might want to add? I would say, you know, start working on your your emotions beside trading right don't focus only solely on trading in your emotions it work on every part of your life to improve your trading career right because it will uh, success will not be given to you if everything else is going wrong in your life yeah so let's say if you're out partying half the time and you're let's say doing random things and you're not yeah. going to the gym it's not like or if you're feeling down or whatever yeah I think this a, will really affect your trading. Absolutely, a big subconsciously. Yeah, a, a, a big part is that when people jump onto a chart when they're in negative or positive, too positive or too negative emotions, is that those are the irrational thoughts and decisions being made. Yeah. Because let's say if someone's sad and they're angry, yeah. of course their trade is not going to run. Just I would say if you're in that state, that you're you're dealing with emotions that are not. Uh, what's it called, like a sad emotion or depressed. I would just say, look at the market, but don't trade it. Right. Just just let it go over, work on your, your feelings. Yeah. You feel more like, work on it. And when you feel better, you feel happier, then you start trading again. But you can follow the market while you're in that sad moment. Right. Like, I would have entered here. Right, yeah. So but you don't know. enter, because you will go on a losing streak from my experience. <laughs> right. Okay, interesting. Well, Julian, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, yes, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I hope you guys learned something and found this interesting. If you guys are uh, wanting to hear more from other traders, please uh, stay tuned. There's more to come. And uh, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>